Hello everyone. I'm making this video today because I want to talk about hair and surgery. Those of you who read my blog will know that I was put up for surgery and it was supposed to have happened last month, but because of all the coronavirus issues, it's been put off and I don't know how long that's going to take. Uh, but I'm making this video today and it will probably be pretty long, so I'll put some timestamps down on the bottom of the video for you. As I said, I'll be having surgery for my right tibialis posterior tendon, which is the tendon in the foot that supports the arch of the foot and flexes the foot down and flexes the foot inwards and um, I'll be having a tendon transfer and my heel bone fixed into a place. Um, I probably had problems with this on and off for the last 25 years or so and I had it diagnosed correctly about four years back and this is a time where you should ask yourself why wasn't this diagnosed correctly before that at least i asked myself that and the answer is that i was a pretty active child and there was always just something else that could explain it like i fell off my horse i wiped out with the mountain bike i probably heard myself stacking hay with my friend something like that there was always an explanation for for why i was in pain i honestly don't know how i even endured it in the first place as far as i can remember i pretty much just always limped and always had a problem with that foot from my entire childhood when i asked my parents about it they said they couldn't remember anything specific but they remember the year when we were in england and for the summer holiday and they remember that I just basically limped the entire summer holiday through but what I did I don't know maybe it's just a general weakness or something maybe I just overworked it a little bit and I never gave it the right treatment so it never healed correctly I, I don't know but this is an ankle that I also broke before and I've sprained it multiple times, so that definitely didn't make it better. And it's just been getting more and more painful over the years, to a point where I just I feel it all the time. It, it, it hurts when I walk a lot, it hurts when I gain weight, I, I can feel when I gain weight. And also it hurts when it's cold, so... Great thing I live up in the frozen north, right? I've been trying physiotherapy and different inlays, but nothing really helped. And it's just getting more and more painful. And like I said earlier, I've injured myself in a lot of often stupid ways. And when this tendon has been at its worst, it's been the most painful thing I've experienced in my life. It, it even beats the time when I literally face planted off my pony and I split a molar clean through. It's It's been that bad. <laughs> so yeah, surgery, tendon transfer, heel bone fixed into place. Fun. It's pretty terrifying in itself, but there's one thing that honestly scares me even more. There's a saying in the long hair circuit that hair is far down the body's natural pecking order. And with that they mean that the hair doesn't pump blood, move oxygen, filter waste, anything like that. It's not important to the body, not physically at least. It has a mental value, but not physical. So if the resources are scarce, like there's a lack of protein, there's a lack of energy, then the hair is one of the first things that will be cut because it's simply not important for the survival. 
And so it does a lot of damage to the body, so the repair work that my body needs to do after the surgery will just bump the hair itself very far down the list of priorities. It simply won't be important anymore. So I have the abstract worry about the surgery in itself, and then I have the very specific worry about hair loss. And I've actually experienced hair loss and I know exactly how sneaky it can be and that really scares me. So I considered leaving this out of the video or maybe making a separate video about it because it's going to feel a little bit off topic but it's also important. So here's your warning. If you don't want to hear about depression and suicide things, um, this is now where you want to skip forward in the video and I'll put the timestamp down there. So consider this your warning. This will be long, but I really want to explain this. But first we need to make a little bit of a detour. Many, many years ago, when I was new in the long hair circuit, I decided that I wanted to count how many hairs I lost during the day because, well, I'm a nerd, I like math and I wanted to see what my potential for hair growth could possibly be. So, I had absolutely no idea how many hairs I potentially lost in a day. They say you lose 50 to 100 hairs during a day but some also say between 20 and 200 and I honestly had no idea, absolutely none. So over a week, I decided every day that I would sweep up my hairs and count them. And now I can laugh at the fact that I did it because, wow, that was boring and annoying work, but I did it every day for a week. After a week, I found that my average was about 50 something hairs every day. So in the low end of what they say you lose of hairs. But I also don't know how many hairs I actually got. Because what are the chances that I got every single hair that I lost during the day, right? But we can probably say that if I lose about 60 hairs during a day on average, that that's probably pretty accurate. With that piece of information, I'll get to the story. Some 12 years ago, I went through a period of enormous stress at work and uh, well actually it was both work and family related but I won't go into details of that because it, it, it doesn't really matter we're getting enough off topic as it is. Um, the stress eventually switched over into a depression and I was just running on adrenaline and cortisol and I couldn't sleep, I could barely function and couldn't sleep at all basically and after three days where I just didn't sleep at all, where in the end I just crashed completely exhausted and finally could sleep, it, it just really was a time when that's what switched over from the stress over to the depression. When I woke up, my energy was just completely gone. I had this cartoony feeling of that big black cloud hanging over your head and you just sort of drag yourself, knuckle drag yourself over the floor, like your energy is just gone, you're half dead. One of the days, I remember the thought that I should go shower and yeah, I, I could go out and stand in the shower and let the water fall over myself. But all the other stuff that I needed to do in combination with that, I needed to wash my face, I needed to wash my body, I needed to comb my hair, I needed to towel myself dry afterwards, I needed to apply deodorant, skin cream, everything. Like, you might as well have asked me to climb Mount Everest. I just, I just couldn't do it. And it's, it's very strange for me to tell this because now when I'm sitting telling the story, I can't relate to the me that I was back then 
it, it's like trying to tell the story that's not really yours but I know it was me uh, these are my memories these are my stories but I don't relate to that me anymore and that's a good thing um, anyways I just really wanted to kill myself just give up get, get rid of that feeling it was just so horrible and of course I contacted my doctor to get some help and I was put on antidepressants and I got on sick leave from work which is probably the best thing in that situation so I thought of leaving the following part out because I really don't want to scare anyone away from taking the antidepressants if they're prescribed to you um, the antidepressants did help me it took that feeling of wanting to actively kill myself and made it more into this weird sort of passive feeling of wanting to cease to exist but not wanting to put the work into it like if my doctor had given me a pill and told me you need to take this pill or you will not work, wake up tomorrow then i would have been like eh so it, it's weird like i said I, I don't relate to this feeling anymore but in that way the antidepressants did help me it did work i have no doubt that this is why i'm still here today but the side effects were absolutely brutal i think basically i had every single side effect listed in in all of the inlays but just because this is getting long, just to keep this relevant, the two things that I really messed with was my appetite and my sleeping patterns, which is basically the most important thing to function in any way whatsoever. So this is really bad. I was faced in and out of four, maybe five different antidepressants, I think, and all of them more or less messed with both the sleep and my appetite of course this is why i kept getting faced in and out of different medicines because none of them really worked that well for me and this is the problem with the antidepressants that your mileage may wear very so much like what didn't work for me might work for someone else so please take your medicine i i can't stress this enough but then again, one of the symptoms for depression is issues with appetite and sleeping patterns. So it's really hard to know what was honestly the side effects and what was the depression in itself. But yeah, one of the medicines kept me from sleeping more than five hours a day. That is not a lot. One of them I just could barely wake up on at all. And the other one gave me these crazy intense vivid nightmares that I basically still remember today um I'm not even gonna pretend I can pronounce his name but I'm putting the name of a artist in the video right now and if you want to see what kind of nightmares I had look up his art because that I don't know if he maybe was on the same medicine as me or had the same if some side effects as me, but this is the kind of shit that I had to try to sleep through. It was brutal. The medicine changed the way I experienced food, how I tasted food, if I even felt hungry at all. And one of them even made me feel slightly nauseous at just the thought of eating something. And basically for a very very long time the only thing I could actually keep down was toast, the wider the better, and tea. There's no nutrition in that. In a situation like that it's actually kind of funny what motivates you. Because I knew a lot of the basic anatomy and biology about how important it is for your body to get proper nutrition. But by the end of the day, what really motivated me into trying and keep pushing 
to eat better was more the worries I had about my skin, my nails, my hair, and, and not so much about the damage that the, it does to the rest of my body. But, you know, whatever the hell motivates you, I guess, it, it, it doesn't matter. As long as you keep trying to push through it. I, I lost a lot of weight, and most of my adult life, probably from I was like 14, I've been hovering in the 55 to 58 kilo weight sort of bracket. Uh, I'm 173 centimeter tall, so I have a pretty skinny build. It runs in my family. Uh, I've, I'm very small boned actually, so it's a good weight for me. But despite how much I tried to not lose a lot of weight, I still dropped down under 51 kilos, which was, that was really skinny for me. That was not a good weight. And I'm putting in a picture somewhere around here. I don't think this is actually at my skinniest, but I think it was pretty close. And as you can see, that was, that did not look healthy at all. Anyways. I gradually got better with some help from my friends and the boyfriend that is now Mr. Igor. And uh, I thought I had gotten through it pretty okay physically at least. I mean, you always carry the mental scars with you, but I thought I had gotten through it pretty well physically. Then about half a year after I was actually beginning to feel myself again, I started noticing the halo, like the regrowth that started coming and it just got longer and fussier and thicker and it just looked like shit and i had already tried growing through that dreaded microphone hair stage and it's just so annoying and now i had to do it again and i think in total if i gathered up everything in that stupid halo it would be about as thick as a thumb that's a lot of hair. I mean, I, I met people that had less hair on their heads in total than that. And that was what I had lost and what I was now regrowing at that point. But like I pointed out earlier, it would not have surprised me at the time that I had lost some hair because my body did suffer. And of course, my body's not going to prioritize growing hair when it's struggling just to get the protein that it needs to to replenish its own tissue, right? But the thing that really scared me was how sneaky it was. At the time when the hair loss must have been happening, I had no idea, none whatsoever. Despite having previously counted how many hairs I lose in a day, I had no idea that I was losing more hairs than usual. And that's the scary part, how sneaky this is, how you honestly don't know, even if you're aware of it, even if you're trying to keep an, an eye on it, you don't know until it start, starts to regrow again. The surgery that I'm going in for involves moving a tendon and fixing the heel heel bone back in a different place and that's a lot of damage to muscle skin tendons and bone it's a lot of strain to the body and the surgery in itself is pretty scary to me and again in a situation like this it's funny what motivates you and not going through the same hair loss again is one of the things that really motivates me uh, of course, I want the stupid foot to heal up correctly this time as fast as possible. That would be very nice. Thank you very much. But I'm really scared of experiencing that hair loss one more time. Now, with all that being said, what can I do to prevent this? What what can I do so I can so the recovery can be as easy as possible and I don't experience that same hair loss one more time? Well, luckily there's a few things I can do, so I want to talk about the four phases that I see in this. 
the first phase is the preparation of work I can do before the surgery. The second phase is the last two days before the surgery and maybe the two first days after the surgery itself. The third phase is going to be the time when I'm stuck with a leg in a cast that's going to be about six weeks. And the fourth phase is when I get put in a boot and I can start with the recovery, the retraining process to get some muscle strength and eventually work towards getting rid of the boot and getting back to normal. I received this little brochure before my surgery. It's about the healthy living before your surgery. And what amused me was that a lot of these advice could be taken directly out of your standard how to grow healthy hair, how to grow your hair fast kind of article, at least of the good kind that isn't trying to sell you some miracle product. But as it has pointed out, many many times before growing hair is not quantum mechanics it's sticking the, to the advice about general healthy living that we all already know this for sure has a lot of the classic advice that we already know uh, limiting alcohol intake limiting smoking stop smoking if you can it also suggests losing weight and I think I will actually try that because since I'll be stuck on crutches, I've tried that before. It's really hard work. It's very repetitive, unnatural, and it's just a strain on your body. And I think no matter how strong you are, it, you will benefit from weighing just a little bit less. This brochure also has some classic advice about the nutrition you should follow both before and after the surgery. And except for the part about how you might be nauseous after the anesthesia, then this is again basically the kind of nutrition for hair growth stuff that I've encountered a thousand times before. Um, you need to get your vitamins, your minerals, plenty of protein, plenty of fiber to keep from getting constipated. It's just basic healthy living advice. This brochure also mentions limiting salt because of the swelling that it causes in your tissue, which can interrupt the healing process. It also mentions limiting sugar because you want to keep those blood sugar spikes yeah well down basically the brochure also mentioned that you should get as much exercise as you can to be in as good shape as you can before your surgery um, so my own plan for the prep work in phase one is two things i want to lose some weight if i can because it will just make it so much easier for me once I get on the crutches, once I have to start the recovery process. Because, well, it's less strain on my good foot and it's less strain on my bad foot once I get out of the cast. And two, I want to gain some strength and get, some, get fitter. But working out is the hardest part because I work full time and I study full time, so I honestly don't see where I should fit this in, but I guess I'll just have to try my best. The diet part so far has actually been pretty easy. Uh, I've focused a lot on getting pro protein for muscle growth and limiting my calories, so your basic calories in versus calorie out. And I found a new love for meal prep, and I can really recommend it. It just, it fits very well into my lifestyle that you can meal prep something relatively healthy and you have it ready to just shove it in the microwave oven when you're hungry instead of that you end up snacking on something really stupid or unhealthy instead. So I actually really like it.
So far the only thing in the brochure that really differs from a how to grow your hair long or how to grow your hair healthy article is the part about following instructions. And you're going to be in the hands of some healthcare professionals who really know their shit, who do this stuff for a living. So following the instructions is pretty important. So right before the surgery, I have some very specific instructions I need to follow. I have this stuff that I'm supposed to wash both my hair and my skin in. And I don't need to analyze this to know that my hair and skin is going to flip out a really sensitive very easily irritated skin so i'm going to hate it but it will limit the risk of infections before and after so i'll have to follow the instructions i'm also not allowed to wear any deodorant or any sort of cream after using that so that soap which sucks i have to first from midnight on the day of the surgery to keep from vomiting when they put me under. That's that, that's nice. Um, there's also some regular over-the-counter pain medication I have to take before I go in. And I am not allowed to wear nail polish when I go in because that's apparently the easiest way to see if my body's getting enough oxygen and that just sucks because totally over the top crazy colorful toenail polish is just really my thing so what else can i do from to make this easier for myself in phase two one thing i can do is to have a pillow friendly easy low maintenance hairdo when i go in for the surgery i'm thinking something with some braids of some sort um i'll wear my contact lenses when i go in change into my glasses and then probably back into lenses afterwards because as those people who wear contact lenses know it's not very comfortable to sleep in them uh, what else can I do? I have my own crutches. Like I said, I've hurt myself in a lot of stupid ways before. And one thing I very much recommend when you're on crutches is to get a pair of gloves. Uh, at least if you have soft office fingers like I do, the crutches are just gonna mess your skin up really, really bad. Uh, other than that, I should pack some stuff to bring in. I am going in for an outpatient procedure, so hopefully I will be sent home the same day. And I'm really crossing my fingers for that because I don't want to stay in the hospital for more than I have to. But yeah, other than that, I guess it's just getting ready for phase three getting everything packed everything i i might need once i come back home with my leg in the cast um have everything within reach of the couch laptop tablet remotes i don't know cushions blankets something to drink something like that i, I could i could use some recommendations for some good tv shows to kill some time once i'm once i'm out of the surgery again so the third phase when i come out and i'm stuck with a leg in a cast one thing that i was looking for and i bought was this it's an amino acid complex um, and it was actually a little hard to find one that covers all the amino acids instead of the one focusing on the amino acids you need for muscle growth. Um, there's 18 amino acids as components in the human hair and nine of them are essential, which means that the human body can't create them out of any other amino acids. So those are the most important ones. 
I have been drinking branch chain amino acids uh, pre-workouts as I've been training, but those are focused on free branch chain amino acids that are used for muscle growth and recovery. This is not the same. This is me being paranoid that I'll experience a lot of hair loss again. So in general, I should continue with my plan of focusing on protein rich food and I should continue my plan of trying not to gain too much weight because let's face it, being stuck with one leg in the cast on the couch that's the kind of time when you will be eating a lot because you're just bored and as soon as I feel up for it I should get up and about moving around and trying to get back to exercise any exercise is better than no exercise at this point um, I also bought this leg massager. Oh, sorry. And although it's not like really a leg massager, it's more like a compression therapy thing. It was the best thing I could find that covers all the way up to your knees. And I bought it because I remember very well how sore and tired your legs get from getting around on crutches. Um, I guess this is really meant for compression therapy because it's huge. Like it's way too big for me to even close it correctly around my feet. But it's actually so big so I can get it all the way up around my thighs, which is just awesome because uh, that's where you get most sore, at least it, it's been every time that I was getting around on crutches. So that's actually really nice. I, I had kind of hoped there would be more of a massage massage, but I guess any sort of muscle stimulation is good because it is such an unnatural and repetitive motion. So So the final phase is when I get out of the cast and I should get a boot that I can take on and off as I want to and I will eventually get back to some doing some physiotherapy and I think I'll buy some of that sports tape just to support my foot, see if that will help. I never actually used it before. One thing I'm actually looking forward to in the last phase is to get back into swimming and that is one of the exercises they really recommend to get into swimming because you don't have the weight on your foot and you get the blood flowing you get some exercise and it will really help speed up the recovery process and that's basically what phase four is going to be getting the recovery done as smoothly as possible and getting back to the life I had before. So that was a whole lot of stuff about the surgery and again we get back to the problem that I don't know when this will be because of the coronavirus. So I'll just keep going in phase one and eventually I will be informed of what is going to happen, get a date at some point. Yeah, well, this got a lot longer than I intended to, so thank you for your time and I hope at least it will be useful for someone out there. And if it is useful for someone out there, I hope your surgery and recovery will go smooth. And thank you for your time.